Aperture, shutter, and ISO. Aperture is a really important one. I want you to think of it like an eyeball. When you're looking at the sun, your pupil's physically gonna get really, really small. And then when you turn back and you're looking at a more neutral, darker setting, your irises are gonna open up that much more and let that light back in. When your aperture is as open as it can be, you're creating a really, really, really shallow focus. If my aperture is at 2.8, which is where I like to keep it at most times, basically it means that there's just a little bit of space for your camera to recognize things in focus and everything else around will be blurred. Versus if I close my aperture down to 11, 20, 22, something along those lines, and I'm gonna see everything in focus around it. I love to keep things at 2.8 because a lot of what I do is storytelling. I focus on people, smiles, objects, details. I'm often trying to pull attention to one thing. I think people probably love the Aperture open photos the most too, just because you get blurry stuff around you and it looks really beautiful. The next one is shutter speed. If Aperture is the eye, think of the shutter speed as you're blinking. Shutter speed is how fast your shutter in the camera is going to close and open in a second. In that second of it being up and down, this is getting exposed via the light that's coming in, whatever light source you have. With your shutter speed, you can tell it to go really fast or much slower, depending on how much time you need light to be hitting your sensor. In a really, really, really bright space, you want it to go as fast as possible because you don't need a lot of that light. You already have a lot of light coming in naturally. If you let it open too long, you're gonna get a way overexposed photo and it's just not gonna work. Opposite is true when it's really dark. Sometimes you need that shutter to be open as long as possible so that you can get as much light in. Maybe you wanna take a photo of water droplets in the air. You need the fastest possible frame rate because you're looking to capture a millisecond. If your shutter speed isn't fast, it's just gonna be a blur of water, which could still be really cool. You see lots of really cool photographers having a really, really slow frame rate and being able to capture really cool movement because of that. That's also what they do for night exposure. They leave it, their shutter open, anywhere from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. You're giving the light from the stars time to embed on your sensor and time to be basically recognized by your camera. Number three is ISO. ISO is a digital enhancer, a digital boost of light. Photographers love, love, love a low ISO because when you bring your ISO up high, because it is a digital support, it's gonna make your photos really grainy. The pros will say, I want 50 or 100 max. You can do 200, 300, 400. 400 is a really happy, safe place. The higher you go, it's just important to know that you are digitally enhancing your photo, so this is no longer natural elements. It is a digital push, and it gets to a certain point when you're editing when you can start to see that digital noise in the photo. For me, when I'm doing video, I can't keep my ISO really low. I often have to boost it, especially because photos have so much more digital information and you can manipulate every little pixel in there and video is a lot more limiting in that capacity. The second you start bringing it up higher, you will start to see that noise. Um, sometimes you just have to, sometimes you have no choice, especially when I'm working in the documentary field. Sometimes getting that sound bite and having a video file is better than having nothing. So, to summarize exposure, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. It applies to cameras across the board. Thank you and miigwech, and stand by for the third video.